Welcome back to another video from Next Man Up, man. We back. We are back. And um, we actually are recording an episode, full episode tomorrow. <clears throat> well, it might not be an episode. We're going to talk about the Clippers. Uh, we've been talking about the Clippers for the last three days in the group chat, arguing back and forth on who the issue is. It's, it's not we. It's not we. It's not we. It's two people. Two people have been going back and forth for okay, three days. Whatever. It's fine. Two people. That is besides the point. That's besides the point. Um, Zach Levine. Is about to be traded. We got the news yesterday. Uh, the, the Bulls and Zach Levine are looking to part ways. I think the Bulls are, are coming to their senses. They, they should have traded Levine or DeMar last yes. season at the deadline. But now they're coming into the season. Uh, I think they're like 4-7, 11 games in, 4-7. and seven. So it's not I going too well. Up, yeah. So it's, oh. it, it should be. I think they should have realized this. I think they should have realized this a lot sooner. Um, they should have realized this before you get Vooch a contract. You should have realized this when people had like peak value. Um, I think like teams will still look for Vooch, Caruso, like Demar to be traded at the deadline. But like I think this whole idea should have been traded a year and a half, a year ago. So I think everyone saw this coming. I don't know why Chicago was just so reluctant to do it. So dang the Sixers and Sucks are on. We should do this a little bit earlier. I hate missing basketball. Well, I'll I'll try to uh step into it, but yeah, so Zach Levine is about to be traded. We don't know where yet, but we have five trade scenarios that me and Max cooked up on places where we think he can go. It's five different teams. Uh, I think a lot of teams are going to be in a in a you know race for him. Zach Levine is one of the most portable players in the NBA. He can he do, he do a lot of things well. He can feel like almost every single team in the NBA. Uh, you just have to have like a good point guard yeah, already. Not- I would say not a great defense, not a great defender, but he can shoot the ball really well. And that's like the biggest thing is you can kind of plug and play him yeah. anywhere with the shooting ability. He's not a great defender, but he's capable. And you don't you don't really need you know him to be a great defender. But nevertheless, we have five destinations for him. So I'm about to put it on the screen and I'll start with mine. So here he goes. The Warriors. Many people may not think he he, you know, this could happen. But Stephen Curry just went down with an injury. And they have not played well with um this season. It might be a little bit more than this because from the Bulls' perspective, I can see like they can see this being not a lot. But you got to think about it. So let me break this down to you guys. It's going to be Zach Levine, Andre Drummond. The uh, the Warriors can get some big depth. Um, <laughs> if you want to call Andre Drummond big depth at this point in his career. But they trade, they trade Clay Thompson, a whopping $43.2 million. It gives the Bulls cap relief because right now they have to play Zach Levine for the next four years, an average of $40 million, which is what it going up in, in some years. And then you get Jonathan Kaminga from the Warriors. He is a top 10 pick with some upside still. Uh, you're, you you will have the ability to let him be free. Um, this is, this is you know, a rebuild. So the bar is going to be going. Vooch might be going. Caruso might be going. You're going to just put Kaminga out there and let him be free. Uh, and then you get a second round pick um, from Charlotte, which I just threw in there, and then a first round pick. I can see this possibly be being two first, but since they had to take on Zach Levine's contract for uh, four more years, you know, I can see it also being one first. I think Zach Levine's trade value is going to be uh, very, very like it has a range of, of possibilities. Uh, give me I don't know. I'm first. not. Yeah, you're good. Can I hop in and say my little two cents about this? Well, what's up? From the Golden State perspective, like, I think it's great, right? Like, I, I know you're laughing, but having Andre Drummond as some sort of big depth is better than nothing. I'm not going to lie. They need big depth more than anything. Um, and Zach Levine, uh, I, like, Steph will still be good for four years. So I don't think Zach Levine will fall off a cliff in the next four years. He's too young. So I think that contract will at least be good for the next four years. My big issue is I'm looking at the Bulls' return. You get old Clay Thompson, which is just, like, getting cap off the books. That's good, uh, though. No, wait, hold on. Let me explain this. Let me finish my thing for a second. Kuminga says he's a stretch big. He shot 17% from three this year. I don't know what he's stretching, but, like, it's not not a lie. He's shooting 17% from three this year. Um, I'm just saying, fanspo just got that. I don't know why they didn't. I know. Um, The second round picks, people are valuing second round picks more. I would say you add another first, or you take out Kuminga and add in more valuable guys, in my opinion, like Modi, uh, Moses Moody or Brandon Pod, both who I think are more valuable than Jonathan Kuminga right now. Um, 
I think you could get a better return on value on both those other guys in the future. Um, I guess the only the only thing about Chicago is, like, I, I'm, I'm going to say this. It doesn't even make sense. You give the keys to Kuminga to do what he wants. No one's doing that. But, like, I mean, you can – I, I get what you're saying about him being free. But, like, regardless, I don't – especially with the other packages we put together, I think for the Warriors' perspective, they have the most to gain. I think, like, from any team here, I think this is a huge trade for them. Um, Clay's obviously not the same Clay that we've uh, been seeing. That $43 million a year, only for one more year, it's not bad. But I think for the future, Zach Levine, I don't know how much his contract goes up by. Is he like $50 million in his last couple of years? He is. He is. So, he is again, but like when we look at the landscape of the NBA, he'll be a all-star caliber type player for years to come. So I'm not really worried about that, barring injuries, obviously. But I think for Golden State, it's easy, easy yes. Um, the only issue is the sentimental factor of trading Clay Thompson. Um, I think that's the thing that might hold it back is I don't know if you're going to like for all Clay's done for you, you're trading him to Chicago. Like, I, I don't know if you're like really doing that right now, but you, you don't have enough, a lot of time with this, with Stephen Curry. You think he's going to be playing for a long time. The injuries are racking up, Max. The injuries are racking up. He's not going to be playing forever. You need to maximize while, while Steph is still uh MVP candidate type player, a top three player in, in NBA right now. Now let's talk about Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson, you can buy his contract out for $3 million, and then you can um, either buy it out. Well, no, nah, because you yeah, can't buy I mean, it out. You, you said this. I don't know what we're doing here. Yeah, he, you can't trade him if you buy him out. He says go to another yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, never mind. He, you buy it's it no out, and then, and then he's going he's gonna to go to another team. So you only have to pay that $43 million instead of $43 million in 2024, $45 million in 2026, $48 million in uh, 2027. So maybe you maybe you add another pick here. Maybe I, I can see that being a possibility. If I, I think I think you have to you have to add another pick or another player of you like value because like I don't know what Chicago's really gaining. Like I, I don't know. Maybe I'm tweaking. The only Cat thing space? that's good is that twenty. Cat like, space is a lot. If they, only only if they buy out Clay. Otherwise, they're sitting on his fat contract. For but like, bro, they can let the contract expire and have a whole bunch of money next year. What do you mean? What were you, what were you, what were you just talking about with his extension? You were saying they're not sending him? No, no, they, they were just let, just, let no, the contract no, no. expire. Yeah, what were you? Yeah, what were you just talking about then? What do you mean? I know it says one year. I thought you literally said what forty five and next year like forty six. Oh, that was, that was Zach Levine's contract. Man, okay, he, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, I don't care about that. Yes, I, was, I thought you were saying like Clay got like an extension or something. I was like, I don't know if I missed no. something, but no, yeah, no. I'm not like I get what you're saying, but like again. I get money off the books is fine. When you look at the free agency glass, like who's going to be there? Chicago just doesn't seem to get free agents all the time. For being it's not like about a big free market, agents. It's not about free agents. It's about hitting it the is. recent. That's recent. the reason to have money. The reason to have no, money is they, no, free agents. They, they need to have money because they literally are going to be stuck with the Zach Levine contract for a lot, a long time. They don't trade him now. And but I think p- paying a guy like Zach Levine is better than paying nobody. You need. They need to hit the reset button. They need to hit the reset button. I agree. And need- I think they're uh, like I think as we go on, there is better reset buttons to hit than this one. I think there is much better trade packages that get you young players or get you better assets than this, in my opinion. So That's what true. you're giving I- this, you're getting a first round a first round pick, Kuminga, and Cap Space. That's what you're getting. I understand. Like you're not keeping Clay Thompson to think whatever, you're not gonna flip him. That's the three things you're getting. Cap space, Kuminga, and a first. And forty that million dollars in cap. And forty million dollars in cap. That's fine. But like you're basically just getting forty million dollars in cap in the first round pick in twenty twenty seven. The Warriors might be yeah, trash. Yeah, and that's, that's gonna be that's the question mark. They won't be yeah, trash because they'll stop Steph be, and they'll stop Levine. They'll, they'll, they'll be LeBron James Jr. <laughs> that'll be that'll be like uh, Bronny Bronny James or something. Now, bro, Bronny's actually, next year. cheers. No, not not him. Um, Bryce, whatever his name. Is. Bryce. Uh, Bryce Max, in twenty six twenty twenty seven, he has a player option. So by twenty twenty seven. Uh, he will be a free agent. So, Levine. Yes. Uh, anyways, that's we don't gotta talk about too much about the Warriors because I think that's probably one of the most uh, I really see spots Ow. at this point. But it does make sense for the Warriors to, to try to pull the trigger on this next trade. The Bulls in the Heat. Now this probably gives uh, Zach Levine the best chance to win a championship, maybe outside the Warriors. Now the Heat trade package is not that good. They don't have a lot of assets at all, uh, honestly. So what they're going to be giving up is Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, and Nicole Jovic. Also, one first-round pick. So you get Tyler Hero, who at this point is a 23-point-per-game scorer. 
Um, for the future, you can he has four more years on his deal. But honestly, twenty seven million for a tire hero. Um, the cap's gonna keep going up. It's not gonna be that tradable. Gonna that's that gonna be tradable. That's that's gonna yeah, be tradable. It might be tradable, right. or it might, it might be tradable, or you know, having Zach Levine on your team is not the worst thing. Like you said, you gotta pay somebody. Now, Doug Robinson, um, eighteen million. He's a shooter. I mean, <laughs> tradable, I guess. Uh, someone might be a shooter. Yo, you gotta, is they gotta make the. Yo, is, they gotta make the money work. I agree. Yeah, I, I think. Work. I think. The only thing I'd say is like I know they don't have many picks. If you add in Jaime Jaquez, it looks a little bit better. Like, if you can get any youth, any more youth out of it, if you can get a Jaime Jaquez and just, like, maybe there's an off chance he becomes a good role player for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just makes it a little bit better. I like this trade more than the other one. Um, for Chicago, I think you get uh, something, right? I think you can at least capitalize. Like, it's kind of like the, um, the what? Like, Game trade? I, I was gonna say, oh no, it was like CP3 going to the Wizards, right? Where it's like just tradable in the future, right? You trade for CP3 to trade something in return. I'm not saying it's like great value, but you can get something in return for Tyler Hero, right? Even if you don't keep him, that $27 million contract in the future, I don't think it'll look as bad in two, three years, right? I think he'll still be at least a bench score, like around there. I think that'll be a tradable contract you can get off. Duncan Robinson, I don't know. He's like off and on every other year. Um, I think like this one has like potential more value. Like you know what I mean? Like you can get more value as the years go on. So I don't mind this one. And it, you at least get a score. You're paying somebody and you at least get someone who's gonna put buckets. Cause like, are you really paying Jonathan Kuminga to give the keys to your entire offense? No. I, Tyler Hero at least can score the basketball. So I'm not as worried about that. Yeah, they could probably add Harvey to this, but you know, I think a lot of heat fans want to keep him. Um I actually talked to one and said if you get don't... if you're getting Zach Levine, that's big. If you're getting exactly yeah. that's big. He's a huge, huge, huge score. But you also are giving up uh, Tyler Hero. So Tyler Hero is basically a f- he has first round pick, um, like as an asset. Like you probably get a first Tyler Hero if you put him on the market. Um, as an asset, you get another first round pick. You get a young player Nikola Jovic, and then you get Duncan Robinson, who you know Duncan Robinson. And you, you got to give up Dale and Terry to make the money work. My big thing is I don't really care about the Duncan Robinson contract or Jovic even. They've learned – they know how to draft well. They know how to get undrafted guys. Like, they've done a good job of that, right? Like, they've picked off good guys off the waiver wires and stuff. Like, they've been very good at developing guys. So, I think if they need, like – not stars, but if you need end-of-the-bench players, right, you need the Max Struces, the Gabe Vincents, uh, the Duncan Robinsons for that. Like, they can do it. So, I think if you're trading away some of your depth, um, not all of it, right? You still keep Caleb. You still keep – who else they got? You got Kyle Lowry starting, Caleb Martin, Jimmy, Bam – it's about hi man, you're keeping. Um, I like I think they'll be able to kind of recreate some of these players and develop other guys that they get um whether they draft them or undrafted free agents. So I don't know. I think you can they are replaceable. Um the Zach Levine offensive upside though is something they need. Like there are some nights where Jimmy can't score, right? Jimmy's not this offensive weapon he used to be. So there are nights where he can't score and Bam's not taking the entire load. Pause. Um so if Zach Levine can come in and score thirty points a night sometimes, like that's huge. This move puts the Heat back into the championship contention. It just does. I agree. Honestly. I agree. Like They'll be right there with the Bucks. They'll be right there with the Celtics. Um, and we seem to be able to beat the Celtics over the past couple of years, so I wouldn't count them out. That's it for my trades. Since since everything about my trades is wrong, we need to get into yours, Max. Let's, let's see what oh, you got. I, I know. No, no, no. I, I'm, ready to, I know you're gonna, I'm ready to I know critique. You're, I know you're I'm ready to critique. Trade, so I you're to get let me know you're ready. Already. Let me know you're ready. Let me know you're ready. I'm going over. I don't know what's up first, so I'm going over. All Never. right, Gee, this looks this looks like the, the the quality on this is bad. Um, in my opinion, probably the most realistic team for him to go to is the Knicks. Um, with RJ Barrett playing better, I think last year if we talk about this, you're adding like four or five first round picks along with RJ Barrett. Now that he's playing better, you don't have to do that. So I'm kidding, but like he was terrible last year. Like I remember, remember our talks with Jaden. Remember I talked with Jaden about this. Jaden would like overwhelmingly like, I do not want RJ Bear on the Bulls. Now he's playing better. He's shooting more efficiently, scoring. Um, Evan Fournier, I still don't know if he's played a game in like a year and a half, but to make money work, he has to be added. And then you get a little bit of bench with IQ. The only issue is they have Kobe White and Io. So and Javon Carter. So it might just be a tradable piece, but I think it may know quickly is better than all three of those guys. Um the two first round picks, uh the obviously the Dallas ones one through ten, I think. So that one They'll get that one this year. You'll basically have three first-round picks this year. So you have three first-round picks this year, um, plus R.J. Barrett, who is another building block to go up with. 
Um, I don't know if this keeps up. It's right. Like I'm not going to like buy into this RJ Barrett stuff, but he's been playing better this year. So it looks a little bit better. Um, if you give him the keys to an entire team, I'm curious to see what he can do. But I don't think this is terrible. New York's obviously willing to pay him. They're fine to take all the money. They've shown that before. I think if you do do this, if you're in New York, I think you still try and get Embiid and you still try and build a big three. Um, I think a big three with Jalen Brunson, Zach Levine, and JoJo. Actually, especially in the East, I like I don't mind it at all. New York's like willing to pay the money. The big issue is just going to be getting defensive wings. Um, the kind of cover for Zach Levine. So if you can do all that without trading Quentin Grimes, I think it's a big W. Um, and picking up whatever minimum guys want to play in New York for um, a championship. But I think New York, I don't know, they've been a laughing stock for the last couple of years. They can't sign the big guys. Um, signing Jalen Brunson helped a lot. Um, he's obviously in my, I, he surprised me. But I think they have some trade assets. They have some pieces right now to go out and make some big moves. And I think this could be the first one. Let me know what you Now, think. I'm not going to lie. This is a good trade. I'm not going to slander it. It's a good trade uh, for both sides. Honestly, you get two first-round picks for Zach Levine. You get R.J. Barry, who has shown some potential. He's a former, uh, th third of our pick, and he's playing well this season. Evan Fernier is just there for a uh, cat filler. And then, man, quickly, uh, you might have to pay him because he's going to be up for a contract uh, this season. But, you know, you are you have a man quickly, Kobe White, so you have some guard depth, I guess. Uh, but he's he going to be a starter, player. too. Or you can flip like, him, or you can trade, or you can trade him, That's or you fair. can trade him, fair. trade him again. You probably get, you probably get a first round pick a man first. quickly potentially for a contender because yeah, a contender you can use a contender can use a man quickly. Uh, a lot of teams be able to use him off the bench. It's like a six man, you know, six man a this year. year uh, Denver. Canada, last year, Denver, Denver, Denver could use him this year with Jamal Murray out. Yeah, so this is a this is a great trade. I, I really don't have much to say about it. Uh, I think um, I've been talking with some Knicks fans, and I think this is the move to make. Because Joel and B might not be available into the offseason, and I don't think this move makes it so where you can't trade for Joel and B. You still have other picks. Uh, Julius Randle is a tradable contract uh, as well. So I think this is a good move. It doesn't like put you over the top or anything, but it, it makes you competitive. Uh, you need some more. You need some more pick and roll scoring. You have two ISO scorers in uh, Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson, and then you got a pick and roll scorer. And Zach Levine, I don't think it compromises your defense that much. Um, and you just need you just need nights where you can, you know, Julius Randle doesn't have to take 30 shots a night and stuff like that. As I also that's think, the only issue is like Julius Randle with how much like he shot chucks at times. Like I don't want you know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't know if Levine's gonna take away some of that offensive like ability. Like I don't know if Julius Randle like role decreases a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because Zach Levine's gonna take his 15 shots a night. So I don't know what Julius Randle is doing because he's not locking up. He's getting boards, obviously, but like his offense has been terrible. So hopefully this can like bring defenders off Julius Randle and let him ISO a little bit better. But that's the only issue is that like some of the offensive, if it's not like going for Julius Randle and Zach Levine, like it's a bad night. Yeah, the Knicks need desperately, desperately need spacing as well. And Zach Levine is one of the best shooters in the league, so it definitely helps that as, as well. So I like the trade. I don't have, I don't think I have anything bad to say about this, honestly. And then let's get back. Well, actually, they don't need Audrey Drummond. They they really don't. Um, they I have, have Isaiah Hardy. They Cap have Isaiah Hardy and, and um, Andre Drummond yeah. is better than Isaiah Hardy. in my opinion. Stop lying. Andre stop Drummond. Lying. Stop Andre lying. Drummond stop the ball. Stop. 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 <laughs> All right. Next trade up. What do you got, Max? All right. This is a different one. I haven't seen this one often. Um, I don't know. I was looking at the teams. Trying to see who I thought would work. Um, we have obviously you guys know Jaden's a big Pels fan. He loves to hate on CJ McCollum, though he's been playing pretty well. Um, CJ McCollum's been winning some of these games for him. I'm not gonna lie. Some of these games, especially against the Thunder, CJ McCollum won that game with his shooting. But I do think Zach Levine is a more reliable uh, scoring option. So with this trade, you're giving up a lot, um, but you also have to take into account that the Bulls are taking on a fat contract, and as the team would say, probably borderline untradeable with CJ McCollum. Um, you get Trey Murphy. I like his upside a lot, and especially on the Bulls. Similar with Jonathan Kuminga, you kind of let him just do his thing. Um, picks wise, you get one from LA, will probably be late this year. The Pels, probably be mid. And then you get a pick swap, which probably won't even really happen just because Milwaukee will probably have a worse pick than the Bulls. Um, or with the Pels, I guess. I don't know. No, it is the Bulls. Well, they have both. It doesn't matter. So you get the more favorable out of the two more favorable out of the Bulls, Pels, Milwaukee. I don't know how that works, I guess. If the Pels trade their pick swap 
No, because it's just Milwaukee's pick. Okay, anyway, sorry, I was confusing myself. Um, I don't know. I like the lineup. The only issue is a point guard. Um, I don't think you have Zach Levine running the point. If you can't get a true point guard uh, somewhere else in the trades or whatever, I think a lineup of Levine, um, B.I., Zion, Valanciunas, kind of scary sometimes in the defensive front court. Um, that's obviously an issue you got to assess in the offseason. But this, regardless of this trade, the defense in the front court is still an issue. It doesn't really matter who you put in there. So you got Herb Jones. You got defensive wings. That's why I'm like, I don't think it's as big of a deal um, because you have defensive wing options. So if you have Levine in, it's not like there's no one on the defensive side. You can sub other guys in. But um, they have to address the center position regardless, whether they trade for Levine or not. So this trade isn't really hurting it. But I do think with the injuries with Zion and B.I., um, I know Levine get injured too. It just provides a little bit more depth and a little bit more scoring um, just in case someone's not able to play. I don't like this trade. I don't like this trade. Uh, one, I think it's overpaid for the, for the Pelicans, especially since this move will not put them in contention. I don't I don't think uh, Zach Levine, B.I., and Zion, it's a good big three. Is it, do I think it's right now put them in contention as far as better than the Nuggets, Lickers, um, Suns? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you already also got a Timberwolves, and then they gave up three first round picks for for a player they're gonna have to pay uh forty plus million dollars over the next uh four seasons. It's all this it's year. Worth though. It. It's all this year. I think it's worth it. After this year, you're done. After this year, picks wise, you're done. Picks wise, you're done. You're not like in years future. You're not worried about it as long as they're competitive this year. You're not worried about LA. Milwaukee's pick swap is not gonna be worth anything this year. Like you're fine. I get you're paying the contract like later down the line, but like. Unless you're really missing Trey Murphy after this year, like the only thing you're eating is a contract. And like I said, I don't think Levine's contract's really gonna be a bad thing in three, four years. I don't know. I, I just don't know if Zach Levine, Brian Ingram, and Zion are enough to even win you a championship, respectfully. Uh I, I don't know. I don't I don't even know if it, it, it gets done. Maybe down the line, possibly, but you still have an issue at the point guard spot, you still have an issue at the center spot. You give it three first round picks. I don't, I don't think it's worth it. I, I think the only team is worth it for it really in the in the West is the Suns, not the Suns, the Lakers and the Warriors. Honestly, those are the only two teams I think uh Zach Levine trade is worth it in there because you you can come in there and have him be a, a tertiary star or a second option in the case of the Warriors, and you feel good about your title hopes. But I really don't think um the, the Pelicans for for a move to make be made like this. For the Pelicans, wait, including three first round picks, Trey Murphy, uh, CJ McCall, even though it's a bad contract, uh, Dyson Dallas was a, a okay young player. I think you have to get a better player than, than what Zach Levine is, um, and what he does for your team. Uh, they do need shooting, they do need another creator, but I think this is a lot to give up. Also, think you know, it's going to be a lot harder to address the, your issues of need. Uh, you, the depth is not that great. I think it's going to make it even you know worse. Um, uh, also think. Um, they still don't have a center, which is going to be harder to do. I'll get a quality one. You, you're paying Zach Levine $45 million. Brandon Ingram, a, a, a load of money, and Zion, uh, a whole bunch of money. So uh, I don't I, like this one. So I got two things. One, you could add in Vooch, and you could get Larry Nance on the other side. But that's going to help your defensive problem. Uh, two, if you threw in Caruso, I, I get the wing. The wing defense is not like their position of need, but it doesn't really hurt. Like, if you get Caruso and you throw in what? They need a playmaker, bro. I'm not going to lie. It's a, a lineup of yeah, – I, mean, Zion, Zion. I think you – look at Tyus. Tyus Jones. I still think Tyus Jones. I don't think the Wizards really need him. I would want them to go for Tyus Jones. He showed yeah, he in Memphis last year. I think it, Tyus Jones I think could be kind of cheap, especially because Washington just does not care about anything right now because they suck. I think you could, could get Tyus Jones. I think a lineup with Tyus Jones, Levine, B.I., Zion. You just got to outscore teams. That's it. Yeah, the defense in that lineup is terrible. Uh, but, you well, just have to outscore teams. Really outscore teams. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, you, you're going too far with putting Tyus Jones in there. That's just a whole nother, another thing. That's just Sorry. reaching. I don't know. All right, we can we can get to the last the last trade. Uh, this is the worst one yet. We're going to see what Josh you got. Not this one, but uh, the Pelicans one was the worst one. Uh, this the is, Pelicans let's talk about this one. That's all right. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the most hyped up one. I think with the Sixers like playing really well, um, I feel like this name or this trade's been thrown out there a lot. Um, the defensive backcourt with Levine and Maxi is obviously not great. Um, I think this is just a better version of the um, Warriors one. You get 
44 million dollars of cap space plus two first and a second um i i think you could add in different picks in there um i know philly's got a couple um you can kind of pick and play around with those but i think the tobias harris contract i think that's a buyout um for concord i think that's a buyout i think both those players can go contribute to championship teams right now um but you get that cap off the books like we said with the warriors trade plus you get two more first round picks um I think that 2026 one, I don't know what the, um, I don't, I don't remember what it is, but it's something like you they get the best that, out of them or they get the worst out of them or something. You can't trade that 24, 24 first round pick. Why? Because you got to, yeah, you got to trade, you got to trade on draft day, which is not an option for Zach Levine. So you can't, you can't add that one in there. You gotta well, it said success, it said success on my <laughs> thing. So I saying. made the trade. So you can switch it around. That's fine. I think, honestly, later first-round picks are more valuable just because I still don't think that Joel Embiid stays. I think the Sixers might have to overpay, though. Um, I get they're playing well right now, but catch them in June, July, I think when they have an inevitable downfall again, right, I don't think they're going to win a championship this year. So I think it might all be great for Sixers fans. Joel Embiid's on cloud nine. They get the first seed, whatever. But then when we when, we, when reality hits – and they still get beat by Boston, and they still get beat by Milwaukee. I think that they seriously look to trade him to New York, like we said. Um, so this is your chance. This is your chance right now to get a third score. Um, defensively, I get it hurts, but Tobias Harris and Furkan Korkmaz are not locked up for you anyways. Um, you get a better score than Tobias. Uh, and contract-wise, if you have to trade Embiid, you still have a Maxi and Levine backcourt for the future going forward. So I don't hate it. Whatever you get from New York, um, maybe we're looking at a Maxi, Levine, and what you get: Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, um, which is a weird team, but interesting. Maybe down the uh, down the line. But I think Philly needs to make another move. I don't think as they are, they're better than the majority of the teams in a seven game series. Or not majority. I don't think they're better than the top teams in the East and the West. Um, so I think they need a reality check and know they have to overpay in order to keep. Um, Joel and be happy. You need to show them that we'll do whatever to keep you here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think on, I, I think you even consider throwing in another first. I'm, if I'm Philly, I'm fine overpaying this rate. I know worst comes to worst, I will trade Embiid, and I'll be able to overpay and get stuff for him in return, and I will have a backcourt of Tyrese Maxey and Zach Levine for the next four years. That's fine. All right. Well, Zach Levine will be traded, I think, soon in the next coming weeks, and you know, you we'll see before? where. Oh yeah, I mean, I forgot about that. My bad. Uh, Tobias Ooh. Harris, thirty-nine million. Freaking course, mods is not is just cat filler. Um, again, I don't think it's worth it for uh the Sixers. Um, do you not you don't have to pay? I think that the Sixers do you not think the Sixers will fire under them. I know you don't think that uh, Embiid will get traded by the deadline. That's fine. I think I, I think uh, I don't know I don't even know if he's gonna I, at this point I don't even know if he's gonna be traded in the offseason right now. They started they started the first ten games on a um a, a good note. They look like one of the better teams in the East, and I'm still under the belief that if all things go right, this team could be an ECF team. In that case, will will Joel Embiid really axe out? And if he does, is he gonna go to a situation that's better than this where he can win a championship? Especially New if he stays in the East and goes to New York, that I don't think that's not going to be better than this. That you, if you go to New I York, you probably got an ACF ceiling regardless. I think the Celtics are still better than you. Uh, you could argue that the Bucks might still be better than you. So um, I, I, we really think that Embiid is going to act out in the offseason. But right now, that's in limbo because of how well the Celtics are playing right now. And I think you trade for Zach Levine and to train Tobias Harris, who's having a good season this year. Also, if, uh, Kelly Uber is having a good season this year. Uh, Tyrese Maxey is playing well. Like he's playing like he'd be the number two option. I don't. I think you don't mess with that because uh, because you bring in Zach Levine, and I think it could mess with uh, Tyrese Maxey's mojo. We just seen him be the third a third option and average about twenty points. Right now he's playing out of his, out of his mind. Um, just roll what you got right, right now. You got a, a, a good team. I think you keep the picks. Also, Zach Levine is owed a whole bunch of money over the next four years, and I don't think that's worth it, especially with like we said, Joel and B leaving on the horizon, bro. So that's why I wouldn't do this that, trade. That's what I'm saying, though. If you want to be competitive, I don't think they're going to want to tank. They've been in the process for years. I don't think they want to go back. So if you have a backcourt of Tyrese Maxey and Zach Levine, you need defensive frontcourt pieces or you need defensive bench. You can get defensive bench pieces. You can get defensive bench pieces. 
If you get a good defensive three, then it sorts itself out. If you can get good defensive front, uh, a three, four, and a five who can play defense, then it's fine with a non-defensive backcourt. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's okay. Um, you still have Nick Nurse as a coach. Like, he's competent. Um, yeah, I, like, I don't hate it as much. My one question, I know it's a little unrelated. Who's a better player right now, Tyrese Maxey or Jalen Brunson? Jalen Brunson. Thank you. I, I think he's a better two with Embiid. I think he's a better two with Embiid. That's what I was saying with New York. And I think, depending on what you trade, I'd trade more picks and depth what you give. Let's say uh, Levine does not get traded in New York. You could do quickly, you could do RJ, and you could do Julius Randle for Embiid. You said quickly, RJ, and who else? Julius Randle. Yeah, or and a couple of picks. You have, you, you, keep, have to, you keep. You can keep, you you keep, keep Grimes, Randall, honestly. you keep – maybe, but you keep Grimes, you keep DiVincenzo, you keep Hart, you keep um, – if you you keep – nah, you got to trade Mitchell Robinson probably. I don't think Mitchell Robinson's coming off the bench. you got to probably add him to the trade. I don't know. I think bench-wise, their bench could possibly be better than Philly if he gets traded there, um, depending on who you have. So – all right, man. That's it for the 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 uh, Zach Levine trade spots. Uh, if you guys are still watching, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow us on social media to get more updates about when we're dropping videos and keep up with our content. And we are going to be out. Basketball is on. It's time to go watch.